Assalamualaikum everybody. How are you all? Can you all hear me properly? All right. Okay, good enough. All right. So today we are going to talk about the last, finally, uh, topic of endocrinology, and that is related to retinoic, retinoic acid and its derivatives. Now, if you look at the um, a background image which I inserted, so you can easily relate to that today is the lesson when we are going to talk about certain um, uh, certain chemicals which are going to enhance the beauty of the face, right, of the skin, isn't it? So who doesn't want to use it, isn't it? Like look here, the blemishes, wrinkles and everything, and look here, such a nice face with no wrinkles, right? So should we use it or not? We will talk about it today, okay? All right, uh oh, I should have made it darker. Uh, all right. Wait. Yeah. Okay. So I hope it's readable. All right. So let's talk about it. Um, this is one of the, uh, you can say, a post uh, some, um, uh, on some social media forum. Somebody actually posted. Okay. So let's read it. What exactly the lady posted? Okay. So she posted. Retinol is a vitamin D derivative that could be the single best ingredient in skincare. It helps increase cell turnover rate. Beyond that, it's one of the best ways to reduce acne, treat dark spots, mild acne scars, soften the fine lines, improve skin texture, and reverse sun damage. Sounds so appealing, isn't it? Okay, so side effects of retinol include redness, peeling of the skin, itchiness, photosensitivity, that is um, more damage can be caused due to the sunlight as compared to in a normal way when you didn't use it. And irritation, retinol can be used more often um, uh, over time, but dermatologists suggest starting with a pea size dilop two or three nights a week. This is so the skin uh, can build a tolerance to the ingredient, therefore becoming more accustomed to it, uh, to the, it over time. So a word of caution. Now, here comes the deal. Retinol-based products can make you more sensitive to the sun. Therefore, it is recommended to avoid sun exposure during peak hours. Be diligent about applying SPF 30 or higher uh, sunblock in the morning. Retinol should be uh, used only at night. So tell me, girls and boys, should I use it? Sounds appealing. Who doesn't want to look good? Should I use it? Yes, okay. All right, Afifa said yes. Uh, Amna said, yes, you can use it, but use it at night. Okay, so you all are telling me to use it and I'm also compelled to use it, but I'm just thinking about it, that how come we are going to avoid intensive sunlight especially uh, from march we will have uh, you know extreme beginning of the harsh weather and in june and july we have uh, like so much hot weather i don't know if uh, we will be able to su survive it or not okay uh, with this retinol uh, applied on the skin furthermore warning so this this drug, okay, basically this is the 
a caption which is uh, which was stuck somewhere okay so i took the picture of that okay so this area contains this is the uh, caption pasted where they stored retinol okay so this area contains retinol uh, retinyl esters a, no, a chemical known to the state of California to cause cancer, birth defects, and other reproductive harm. So, um, and if, even if you go to the dermato dermatologist, okay, and I tell you what, uh, dermatologist, I don't know abroad, but uh, there's a very, 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 very famous dermatologist here in Karachi, and so many of my friends went to him uh, and he actually prescribed this retinol. And I tell you, the ladies would look so beautiful that I can't describe. But all of a sudden, they had this change. All of a sudden, they started to look attractive. But uh, the long term uh, side effect is that the children uh, they, they'll give birth to might have some birth defects, right? So I don't think so anybody would want that, right? So yeah, there is a period in which you can, uh, you know, stop taking it. And then uh, there's entire precaution written actually on the label. If you buy this drug, so there is the entire precaution written on the label. All right, so yes, you can use it. But uh, I overall, uh, you know, at this age uh, in which I am, I think uh, when I was a child, so many people used to tell me to use you know, um, some products which would make me look fairer, uh, which would enhance my skin complexion because my other siblings were uh, fair. Uh, they had fair skin, fair colored skin. So everybody literally used to tell me a lot of tips, 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 techniques and whatnot. But at this age, I think it is useless how you look. Seriously, the most important thing is that how you behave, how good, uh, how much good of a human being you are. I'm not saying to be a shabby, um, you know, look and all. All right. But I'm saying, yeah, you should look decent. Okay. You should look tidy, but not, don't be obsessive about it. Okay. Because looking good does not guarantee you successes in life. Looking good does not guarantee you happiness in life. Right. So don't fall into the trap of looking good, okay? Especially when we have, unfortunately, social media, um, uh, you know, in our lives to hamper our vision and everything, okay? So don't fall into that trap at all. Looking good is not that long-term beneficial, okay? All right. So when we talk about the structure of retinol, which is vitamin A, so it's a pro-hormone. Now, what is a pro-hormone? Pro-hormone is a hormone that is within the gland, okay? Within the gland and basically, and basically uh, they enhance the uh, hormone's overall activity, okay? So a pro-hormone that is converted by intracellular enzyme to activate the active agents, okay? So the active agents are all trans retinoic acid, and um, nine cis retinoic acid. I'm sure in organic chemistry you have read about what is cis and trans and everything, so I'm not getting into it. Uh, other retinol metabolites are biologically active. So the action, uh, the action of retinoids are mediated via uh, intracellular receptors of two main classes: retinoic acid receptor and retinoid. X receptor. So RAR and RXR. Retinoids are ligands. Uh, retinoids are ligands that interact specifically with RXRs. So each of these classes has at least three distinct isoforms. Okay. So the retinoid receptors are members of the nuclear receptor family and act by modulating transcription of a specific genes. Uh, so overall, if we talk about it, so you see retinol is being converted into retinol, okay? And then retinol is then changed into the different forms, active forms, which we talked 
and once it's activated then they go inside the nucleus okay so we have rar x um, rxr receptors okay so they would bind to it okay and then once they would be activated as a result um, on the dna the gene would be triggered to express all right and then different proteins would be formed to perform the action that is needed so retinoids are morphogens playing important roles during embryonic development so morphogens are you know that are controlling the development of the cells okay so uh, they control the embryonic development retinoids okay including the regulation of cellular pro proliferation and differentiation and the modulation of immune functions and cytokine production so they cause severe fetal malform malformations and must be used with extreme caution in females of childbearing age like i said before use it with precaution okay all right so we have um a drug by name of uh tretinoin tinoin okay so it is all trans retinoic acid a naturally occurring met metabolite of vitamin a um it is a topical preparation sorry typo error uh -oh. I have a message from any one of you. Wait a bit. Wait a minute. Come and get it. See, Amna, when we are taking the medicine, okay, which is um, uh, which is we we are taking artificially, okay. So that is risky, okay. So yeah, we need to be very much careful about it. All right. So, uh, tretinone is all trans retinoic acid, a naturally occurring metabolite of vitamin A. It is a topical preparation. Obviously, it has to be topical, right? Okay. So, used for the treatment of acne and photo age skin. Photo age skin, they mean the skin which is damaged due to intense exposure of the sun. Okay. As an oral agent, it is used in the treatment of acute pro my uh, uh, myelocytic leukemia so i have inserted an image over here okay so what happens is you see uh, a lot of cells are uh, are developed okay which are premature okay and um, what happens is uh, when we talk about wait a minute uh, this acute promyolytic leukemia so this is also known as apl okay so it is it has too many immature uh, you know blood forming cells okay uh, uh, in the blood and in the bone marrow okay and what they do is this they interfere in the production of rbcs wbcs and platelets all right so this is one of the negative uh, you know um, a negative condition which is treated by it okay and may be used in the treatment of uh, Kaposi sarcoma. So you see here, this is this that um, the cancer cells develop, okay, and uh, the red and purplish, uh, you know, these conditions appear on the skin, and they're basically because um, these places have um, the cancer cell blood vessels, okay. So uh, because of which this condition happens, which is called as Kaposi uh, sarcoma, okay, and it is treated by this particular medicine. So, adverse effect of tretinoin includes tenderness, arrhythmia. Arrhythmia means redness of the skin, which is uh, due to increased blood supply, okay, and burning. There is also uh, an increased risk of sunburn. Oral administration is associated with a uh, with a syndr uh, syndrome of hypervitaminosis A, which includes headache, fever, bone pain, nausea, vomiting, and rash. Then we'll talk about 
iso wait a minute then we'll talk about isotretinoin so it is an oral agent used for the treatment of severe cystic acne okay i think i have inserted yeah so cystic acne you can see the different skin conditions okay and um, you can see how exactly in each condition the skin would look like so that you do not um, you know confuse in between these all right okay so let's read about it it's an oral agent used for the treatment of severe cystic acne and symptomatic management of cretinization disorders cretinization disorders is actually this when you have severe um, you know uh, dryness kind of a situation where the skin looks cracked okay so that is keratinization disorders okay so it reversibly reduces the size of sebaceous glands okay and hence the production of sebum it is the 13th cis isomer of uh, tretinoin tre uh, tretinoin adverse effects of iso Tretinoin includes inflammation of mucous membrane, most often the lips, rash, and alopecia. Uh, less common adverse effects include um, arthralgia uh, and uh, myalgia. Okay, so uh, this condition, uh, which is arthralgia, okay, this is related to the joint pain. Okay. And this myalgia, this is related to the muscle pain. So now on, whenever you have a muscle pain, instead of saying, oh, I have a pain in the muscle, you would say, oh, I have myalgia. Okay. All right. So retinoids tend to inhibit lipoprotein lipase, which leads to an increase in serum triglycerides. It is teratogenic. Teratogenic, I'm sure you know. Uh, forms birth defects in the babies okay all right so we have now um acutretin so it is an oral agent approved for the treatment of cirrhosis and other disorders of cretinization okay so cirrhosis is actually a skin condition in which skill cells skin cells multiply 10 times faster okay as compared to the normal one so you would actually see the red patches along with the white scales okay i did not attach the picture here because i i did not want to that's all okay and other disorders of keratinization uh, in addition it has been studied in cutaneous t cells lymphoma and for the prevention of the skin cancers following solid organ transplantation so adverse effects include skin and nail abnormalities it is again teratogenic now when we talk about erythritinoin uh, okay so it is a synthetic version of 9 cis retinoic acid it is a topical cream approved for use in the skin disorders associated with kaposi syndrome and then we have adapalene so it is a topical retinoid like drug for the treatment of mild to moderate acne vulgaris so it, it is actually the acne which is really um, in a severe form uh, it is a nephthoic acid derivative that binds to rars then we have uh, tezerotin okay so uh, following topical application it undergoes a stress hydrolysis to the active form so uh, which is the tezerotenic acid which binds to all three members of the fam rar family okay so it is used to treat cirrhosis photoaging which is again fine wrinkles right and acne vulgaris the most common adverse effects seen with um, uh, tezarotene are skin related which is rash now this is a french word you know which means peeling okay so we pronounce it as uh, uh, disquamation okay and 
and pruritus. Okay, so pruritus is actually itching of the skin. Then we have uh, Bexa routine. So it is a synthetic oral and topical rexinoid with selectivity for the retinoid X receptor. It is used in the treatment of cutaneous T cell lymphoma, uh, Kaposi sarcoma, which is also called this uh, syndrome, okay? And breast and lung cancers. It has also been used to treat cirrhosis. Its major adverse effects are hyperlipidemia, uh, both hypertriglyceridemia and uh, hypercholesteremia. Other serious adverse effects include acute uh, pancreatitis and hepatic dysfunction. Um, thank you so much, everybody. Wait.